from using a custom Corsair app for improved accuracy to using a custom resolution utility for lower input delay. These are 10 apps Fortnite pros use that you don't. Starting off with Crosshair V2 that's found on the Epic Games Store, which by the way, I can only assume that it is 100% safe and 100% allowed, or you wouldn't be able to download it nor install it. You can see this basic app here allows you to customize your Crosshair via different sizes, different shapes and colors. However, it does only seem to work in windowed full screen mode, so make sure to set that up in game. I also think that this is maybe why some pros in the game use windowed full screen mode, like Peterbot for example, I could be wrong. In addition to that, I also like to go into my in-game reticle settings and actually turn that off, as I'll just be using this custom one in game. But if you're wondering what the benefits are to this custom crosshair, it's said to improve your aim, especially when hip firing, and that does make sense because this crosshair gives you a lot of consistency, because you've got the same reticle all the time no matter what. Next we've got Process Lasso, a CPU optimization app that can boost your FPS. Many pros like Tens from Valorant have been seen using it, but to get the app just simply Google Process Lasso and then download it. And once you have installed it or have downloaded the application itself, you can see it does look pretty confusing. Now I myself am still playing around with this, testing different benchmarks and stuff for my current PC, as what I've heard with this program is it differs from PC to PC, like mileage basically might vary. But I'm going to show the best settings that I've found so far and it's something that you can play around with if you want and if it works good, great, and if it doesn't you can go ahead and revert it. But so far I've found if you go to the top left corner under main, it's important that you have this checked, that's manage processes of all users, as well as pro balanced enabled checked. Some people also have the performance mode enabled, but I've not found that beneficial just yet. I find the other settings just fine. But after that, you can go ahead and click off it and actually open up the game of choice, which for me, that's going to be Fortnite. And once the game itself is running, if you go back into process lasso under active processes, you will find the game right there and you want to go ahead and right click on it. The first thing most people do is go under CPU priority under always so it's always happening and they set it from the default none or it might be on normal to high and that right there makes the priority class on the specific game high as by default it is on normal another thing people like to do is right click on it yet again but go under cpu affinity under always and they actually select the cpu affinity now in here you can see that it's checked like everything and by default it does check both the performance cores and the efficiency cores but i've heard that for some pcs out there and this is not for every PC but for some it's something you've just got to try if you click performance cores and only use the performance cores this can be beneficial for me I didn't notice any sort of difference so I just like to cancel this but that right there is all the settings I've found so far for process lasso it's a very interesting program if you've got any suggestions yourself feel free to comment them below next I want to talk about timer resolution which is another application people have been using to lower their input delay or at least they say it does I'm not sure if it's a placebo effect or not the app itself basically changes the resolution of the default Windows timer and in turn people claim that this makes their gameplay feel more responsive, gives them higher FPS and even lower ping. As always though, the results that you get will depend on the system you're using so please do your research before setting this up. If you do fancy it though, it's a very simple setup, just literally download it. I believe this is the official legit one on screen right now. For some reason now you need to pay for it, I always thought this was free but once you've installed it, if you just click maximum, that will lower your timer resolution. Next is ISLC or Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. The first link should be the one where you can download it. Once opened, you can customize it to lower your input delay. The list size should be left at default, but below that you have free memory setting that should be changed depending on how much RAM you have in your system. To check this, you can press Ctrl Alt Delete, go into Task Manager, head into Performance, and under Memory you'll see it there. And whatever RAM you have, you can put the corresponding values inside. After that, you can click this button, which will clear the value and there's also an optional setting too which can lower your timer resolution you can change that to 0.50 tick the box and then press start. Next we've got filter keys, a popular program that allows you to change values that are not possible to set in the standard Windows UI with many people saying it can make your movement feel more responsive and also your editing feel more responsive as well. But to be fair, I'm not sure if it's a placebo or not. If you want to try it out, there's two methods to get it. The first method is manually editing the filter key settings in Windows. You can actually change the settings yourselves in reg edit. Here's a location on where to change the values. Some example settings of 
this are on screen right now. But guys, do do this at your own risk and research it. Or method two is to use the filter key setter. After downloading it, if you just extract the file, then open it up. These are apparently the best settings to use for filter keys. That's ignore on zero, repeat delay on 130ms, repeat rate on 20ms flags on and available on again do this at your own risk and if you want more information slash in-depth tutorial check out the dedicated video i made all about it on screen next is nv clean install an app that allows you to remove bloatware from your nvidia drivers to set up you just select whichever driver you want to use and then simply select the components that you want to install with it next we've got keyboard software in most you'll find a setting called set actuation points a lot of pros tend to set this to the lowest one possible in order to get the fastest input as as you can expect the lower this value is the more sensitive it'll be and the higher the value is the less sensitive it'll be so most pros tend to put this to the lowest one possible to get the fastest actuation point you also may have a rapid trigger set in and this basically eliminates the second slowest element in input latency return key press travel before key activation this rapid trigger setting dramatically changes the actuation and deactivation point and your keys will actually activate before you intend to press them and deactivate when you intend to let go and you've got some settings you can play around with here you also may have an additional setting that can lower your input delay even more you can see here this cuts off one ms which is pretty good next custom resolution utility this by the way is the lowest input delay method of setting up a stretched resolution but before you must change your resolution inside the game user settings to your desired stretched resolution don't forget in properties to check that read only box and after that you can google the utility then the first link should be from monitortests.com and then inside you will see the download links i like to download the first one and after you have unzipped it you'll see there's an application that you can open once you've opened the application you want to head to the top drop down and make sure your main monitor is selected it should be in brackets active after that you want to go to the left hand side and go down to where it says none click that button and it'll deselect all of these which is what we want from there you can go under extension blocks click on the first one here then click edit then under detailed resolutions you want to find the one with the highest refresh rate mine is the bottom one right here and then double click on it then inside here you want to click on that copy button right there you can then close this down and from there you can then actually delete all of these and then press ok once you've done that under the standard resolutions you may have a ton of random resolutions in here some of you may not and that's absolutely fine but if like myself you do you want to go ahead and delete all of those and from there at the top as well there might be be the same sort of thing in my case i've only got one you want to go ahead and delete all of these in the detailed resolution box which will give you a clear top box and then a clear middle box from there though under the standard resolution to middle box you want to click on add and then inside the resolution drop down you want to go ahead and add 1920 by 1080 or your native resolution then press ok and from there under detailed resolutions you want to click on add and inside here is where we're going to put our custom resolution but first it's really important that you paste what we copied earlier so just click paste firstly then we can go ahead and add our custom resolution and i myself i'm going to use 1680 by 1080 so i don't need to change the vertical once you've done that and everything is looking good, you then can press OK. And as you can see, we've got our custom resolution, we've got our standard resolution, and then we've got the extension block. Now, some people like to delete everything in the extension block, but I like to leave it just as is. And from there, we can literally just press OK. After doing that, a lot of people like to restart their PC via the application itself, via clicking one of these, or via literally just restarting in Windows. But I want to warn you guys, after you restart, if there's any sort of issues, you should refer to this guide that I'll have in the description of this video that can help you if you get any sort of black screen issues or anything like that. In addition, though, I'll also show you how to revert all of this at the end, which can also help you. And after you have restarted your computer, you may not notice that you're in 60 hertz now don't panic that's fine because what we want to do is right click on our desktop we want to go into our display settings then scroll down to where it says advanced display then at the top make sure your main gaming monitor is selected and then you should see two different modes here your desktop mode and your active signal mode now from here guys you want to click on your display adapter properties then in here click on list all modes and if you scroll down to the very bottom you should see your brand new resolution which mine like I customized earlier in the CRU is 1680 by 1080 
Just select that, then press apply. Your screen may go black, don't panic. But once we are back, you can see that we now have the lowest latency stretched resolution possible as both of these are matching, which they don't do if you use the GPU scaling method, which is completely fine, but this is why this method has the lowest latency possible. Next up is Nvidia Profile Inspector, where you can configure hidden Nvidia settings. Just simply Google it, then click on the GitHub link, then download the latest version, where you'll then need to extract it. And after that, you are all good to go. What I like to configure in here is a setting called Potato Graphics that can boost your FPS with the obvious lower graphical quality, which I did make a video about. But if you want this, you need to firstly select what game you want to use it for. You then need to scroll down to anti-aliasing. You need to change this setting to 0x08 replay mode all. From there, you can scroll down to texture filtering. You can turn off the driver control LOD bias. Then below that, this is where you can configure how potato -y you want the graphics to be. A few options are low graphics. These are the settings on screen. Then you've got ultra low graphics. These are the settings on screen for that. I myself like low graphics as it's a good happy medium. The settings for that are both plus zero 5000 on the LOD bias settings. Then after that you can apply the changes and you'll see in game you now have potato graphics. Moving on to mouse software which your mouse should have. It'll look very similar to this on screen. Inside it though it's recommended to increase your DPI as that can prevent pixel skipping. Most pros use either 800 or higher. In addition you'll see pros changing their pollen rate which is said to prevent micro stutters the higher this value is the better however for some low end pcs this can decrease fps but i think overall a thousand hertz or higher is the most beneficial next is anti-malware software a lot of pros like clicks will use an antivirus like malware bytes to perform scans that will search their computers for malware viruses and much more which by the way could be taking up resources on their pc and slowing it down but if any sort of malware is found after the scan the software should automatically put it into a quarantine which will basically stop it from slowing down your PC and taking up those resources. You can also find a similar app called Windows Defender on your Windows operating system where you can perform a very similar scan. But if this video helped out feel free to drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel and before you go check out any of my other videos on screen right now.